I'm Shahar. And I'm Nash, and we're with BuzzBooster.tv. Yes, and in today's episode, we are going to talk a little bit about consumer engagement. We are going to t show you some very cool applications out there that provides consumer engagement. Then we have a very special guest. Very special guest. Diane Cuckley, that she's going to tell a little bit about herself and give you some tips to achieve long-lasting prosperity. After that's all, right. that's what we are that's all about. That's what we're about. Yeah, and then how often should you post on social media sites? Yes, that's a question we get very often. Very, very often. So, hope you enjoy. Well, we hear a lot today about engagement, right? It's a, a, a word that is everywhere. But really, how do you do that, especially when you're dealing with social media tools and sites? Well, the first thing you need to decide is if you're doing this for business or not. Because it, there is a different approach in order to get engagement. You know, you can be the queen of connections and not get any business out of that. So when you are approaching engagement in social media sites, as an expert, as a business, you should lead with content. That's the main thing people want to know from you, content. And then a little bit about your life, your personal life, just a sneak peek, not too much, because they're not following you or befriending you on your page to be your friend, really, it's really to get some information they can apply and see results not, uh, right away. Not only that, the second thing you need to think is as a company, how can you create engines of engagement? Okay, what can you put in place that will keep people interacting with your company? I'll give you some examples that people are doing uh, with, with quite success. For example, on Facebook, uh, some people give one day of the week for all the fans to promote themselves. It's an open day where you can go and, and talk about you and your business. So the company really becomes uh, a wall. For, for people to promote themselves. That's one way because it gets people interacting. And especially on Facebook, you know that really the amount of times people interact with you will play a factor on how well you show in Facebook search engine, okay? Second thing, you might ask every now and then a question. But here's a trick for you. Ask questions that don't make people have to write too much. It, you would get a lot more engagement if you, for example, could ask a question where they can answer with one word. For example, what is the best business book you ever read? So they can put just the title. Don't make them go too much in depth in whatever is the question because they are not going to interact. And you're going to see that people tend to make very open-ended questions and expect that interaction. And it doesn't happen. But if you ask questions that require just one word answer, you get a lot more interaction. And you can do this actually in any environment in different ways. For example, you can even use games to create more engagement than others. And Nashla now is going to tell you what's happening between two of very popular games and show you how really one is providing more interaction and is more valuable from a business perspective too than the other. Hello everyone. So today I'd like to talk to you about these games, these social games, mobile application type of games. As you know, we've mentioned several times on our show about Foursquare. And similar to Foursquare, there are several others, such as even Facebook Places and uh, even the, some uh, Goala and some other ones. But there's a new one in town called Scavenger. And that's the one specifically I'd like to talk to you about, especially in relation to Foursquare. Here's why. Foursquare is wonderful in terms of, I, I actually love it, I use it all the time, but really if someone goes to a business and they check in and the more they, they go there, the more they check in and the person who goes there the most becomes the mayor, right? And so that's really nice on a business, from a business perspective because it, it, it creates that, that engine of engagement like Shahar was talking about because it gets people involved and it gets them to come back and, and come more often in order for them to become the mayor and sometimes when there are specials to also unlock those specials. So it's a great tool that way. But then I went to Joe's Crab Shack last week. I love that place. The, the, my favorite is the Dungeness Crab with the Old Bay Spice, by the way, if you go there. But anyway, so I went there and they said they had all over the place download the scavenger app and do the stuff on there to unlock the goodies. So I downloaded the scavenger app and started immediately analyzing the app, especially from a marketing and business perspective. And I found that they've done several things that are actually more beneficial to the business owner than 
Foursquare does. For instance, one of the things that they said is, hey, share with us uh, your favorite appetizer. Share with us your favorite dessert. They had several little tasks like that that were easy and quick for me to do as a consumer, but very beneficial to them from a data perspective, but more importantly, because it gave them the interaction that they're looking between them and me. Now they understand more about me, and now I'm more engaged with their company. And guess what? The moment I do that, I get a free appetizer. Or the, an, another task that they give you is uh, take a picture with the, with the group, with the people that are there with you. And you take a picture and you share it on there. Not only it creates that buzz, but it also goes to Facebook. And now I'm tapping, they're tapping into my network on Facebook and Twitter as well. So do the math. I mean, I have about 20,000 followers on Twitter. 20,000 followers are now exposed to that picture to that's directly correlated to Joe's Crab Shack. So there's great potential there. And the more businesses really stop to analyze, okay, how can I use this tool? Because really all it takes from them as a company is just the time of, of creating, okay, what am I gonna do? What are we gonna offer our, our clients? And then just throw it out there. Really all it takes are some, some, some keystrokes as they're typing the promotion. Because it's really neat that way where you can put several tasks that you want your consumer to do, to take, and then you only reap from the benefits that that gives you. So it doesn't take money, it doesn't take, uh, it really doesn't take a lot of investment. It just takes the willingness to try a new tool and the creativity to do something fun that you think your audience will respond well to. So go take a look at it. Hi, I'm Diane Conklin from Complete Marketing Systems. We show people how to take knowledge and information that they already have in their head and turn it into profits, typically in 90 days or less, and build their businesses that way. We're marketing experts and we specialize in helping people start, build, and grow their information marketing businesses through direct response marketing, through direct mail, social media, event planning and marketing, and um, information marketing. <laughs> we really got started in this business many years ago um, because I am not a very good employee like a lot of entrepreneurs and so I knew there was something more out there that and I was just driven to find something different. I'm a, I'm, I have a master's degree in exercise physiology that's my uh, educational background and I just knew there was something else out there and so I took sort of an odd start to the business. I actually worked for free for a year for another entrepreneur so I could learn the information marketing event uh, business and events and that sort of thing. Faced a lot of challenges, you know, but, but they've all been fun. When you're working for yourself, there's something about challenges that, that don't seem as big. You know, I think the biggest challenge is, is going from owning a business uh, which is what you want to do and when you really start out what you what you own is a job and I think the biggest challenge is making that transition um, I think the other biggest challenge is really up here it's mindset it's 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 how you think about things and and how you face those challenges that make such a big big difference in your business um, I think the most effective thing for us in business I'm gonna say direct mail because that's a big part of what we do the other thing that we really excel at in business as far as marketing is really networking going into groups and joining groups and and getting to know people and in and, and forming that relationship and then doing business with people that way um, is one of the best things that we've ever done for our business and I think uh, building the relationship with people first and then talking about business has been really the reason uh, that, that that's happened. So I'm supposed to talk now about <laughs> two things that uh, you can do to achieve prosperity. And I'm gonna tell you the two things that I think help me the most. And they're gonna be probably different and odd and that we wouldn't have thought about and, and something most people wouldn't talk to you about. One is reading continuing to grow and educate yourself. I spend about an hour every night before I go to bed reading some self-help, positive mental attitude, marketing, business book, something like that. And I think that, uh, again, it's a mindset thing and it helps me stay focused, it helps me stay positive, helps me move forward. Um, the second thing that I would tell you is I journal and I journal a lot. I journal on a personal side and I journal from a business side. Uh, sometimes the journal is doodles, sometimes the journal is a list of ideas, but I find for me that when I get those things down on paper, I can then prioritize things, scratch things off, put them on a later pile, whatever it is, and it really helps me to stay focused 
and to get stuff out of my head. I think sometimes as entrepreneurs and business owners, we're in our heads way, way too much. And, and it costs us. It costs us time, it costs us money, and uh, it also costs us in, in, uh, in mindset, which is a really, really big deal. Um, if you'd like to find out more information about our company and what we do, the easiest thing to do is go to www.complete marketingsystems.com that's plural complete marketing systems.com love to uh, interact with you and have a have a conversation and see if there's anything that we can do to help you thanks so much all right she's a smart cookie isn't she? oh yeah one smart cookie yes yeah, she is you know going on with the topic of engagement yes. consumer engagement there is a question we got all the time right how often should i post in social media yeah so let me give you some suggestions here. so like shahar tell mm -hmm. us let's start with youtube okay let's start with youtube it's one of our favorite too it is one of our favorite. well ideally you would post a video on youtube every three days every three days so uh, videos that you can use on your blog you're giving tips to pe people that would be ideal now Let's uh, stop for a moment and think, what about the web show, right? Yeah. That's a different question. thing, right? For a web show, how, how often do you do the web show? Once a week, or once every day? However you're doing, keep doing that. What keep you want to do is have another account where you put the other videos. Got and it. why is that? Why? Because when you put another video, uh, the, the one that was there before gets out of the queue. So yes. it gets less visibility from there on. Sure. Let's say, Shahar, you are posting videos, mm -hmm. and I'm just a friendly user that like your videos. Mm -hmm. So I subscribe to your channel. The moment you post a video, it's up on my queue as yes. something I have to do. Yes. The moment you post another video, it bumps the previous video down, and co up comes the other one. Yes. So ideally, you would leave the show in a separate place so where you keep the constancy that you have right now. Because you want the show to have more traction. Exactly. You want more people to watch it. You want it to... And they want them coming back every single you week want them and back. be able to find that there. So that's for YouTube. Got it. Okay. YouTube. Now, Facebook. Facebook. Okay, Facebook as a company, you should post three to four times tops every day. On your page? On the fan page. Okay. Not more than that. Because you have to understand that the average uh, user has 130 friends. It's yes. not a lot. So what happens if you post eight, ten times there? Too much of you. Too, yeah, they, they get tired and they become and blind they, to you. Or they hide you, literally. Yes, yeah, or they hide you, which is, is even worse. Worse. Right? So you want to create attention, remember, more than visibility in order to achieve yes. long-lasting prosperity. You have to pay attention to this. The average user with 130 will see you too often if you post more than three or four times All right. a day. And so the person, average user has 130 friends. So if you're posting too often, they're seeing too much of you, and if they start getting tired of you, and they might hide you, or do they just become blind to you. So three to four times is optimum for them to see you and interact and engage with you. Mm -hmm. And the last one, Twitter. Uh, Twitter, yes. Yeah. Well, Twitter has a very short shelf life. Very you post short. something and then three minutes, it's uh, gone. It's gone. So you want to put from eight times to 18 times a day. Yes. Okay, so you can, uh, you know, use all your skills to talk to people on Twitter and yes. they would be fine because it's so fast. So here's the thing, with that in mind, a lot of people have uh, the automated, okay, every time I post on Twitter, it goes straight to Facebook. Yeah, it works careful. fine and dandy, mm -hmm. but you have to be careful because if you're posting up to 18 times a day on Twitter, which is, it's in between there of the optimum number, now that's too much for Facebook and you might be overwhelming your Facebook audience. Yes, you might want to keep those uh, kind of separated or mm -hmm. ha and have different content yeah. going on Twitter than on Facebook because yes. also, you know, they, they know they're going to get different uh, a different kind of value every time they go to one or another that's and right. not just repeat itself yeah okay i think that's it for today i think so yes i hope to see you next time yes yeah, see you next time